Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to show you the soap asset from the Unity Asset Store. Now, this video is sponsored, so thank you very much for that. And I'm going to show you how this tool for scriptable events, scriptable variables, and much more is going to be extremely useful for you to make your workflow and your process a lot smoother. Now, in my case, I'm just going to be working with a health system, and I'm also going to add a little bit of particle management to it. So you guys can kind of see how we can utilize SOAP to its potential of actually really cleaning up your project, making it easier to work with other devs, and for that sake, making the project a lot more scalable and code-free very easily. So let's start by focusing on the player's health here. So all I really have is just the player set up as a sphere and then a health text mesh pro here, which just keeps track of his health. Now on the player, let me just add the script called health that I just made. It's just in here and it doesn't do anything. It's just an empty, completely brand new script. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this. And the first thing that we'll need is the text mesh pro int variable because I want my health to be an int. So I'm going to do public int variable and I'm just going to call this the player health. Now with this, let's try and modify the health. So let me just open up the update loop and let me do if input dot get key down and then let's do key code dot a. Then I'm going to do one thing and key code dot d I'm going to do another thing now let me start by just making a method for actually changing the health i find this to be the cleanest way to go about it i'm going to do change health int change and here we go. so now this is going to do the change health with minus 10 and then let's also do an if input dot get key down e code dot d we'll do a change health and we'll add five for example and now in here we can take the player health dot value and we can just add the change onto it like that and now here we go it's as easy as this now we can modify the health up and down now let's also have it display on the text now for this they actually have some binds which are extremely helpful so first things first i'm in my soap assets folder here and i'm just going to click click the create button next to the player health variable here and now it's automatically populated it with the player health scriptable here so on the health text now, what I can do is I can add the bind for text mesh pro and I can feed it the int variable like so. We can also add a prefix or a suffix to it. Let me just do HP, for example, and that's it. Now it should automatically update the text to fit with the player health. Now there's a few settings on the scriptable as well that we can do immediately to make it really easy to work with. So for example, I want it to be saved and I want the default value if we have no save to be 100. I also want it to be clamped between zero and 100 and that should really do it. So now it will automatically save for us and and so let's just go and test this now. So I'm going to hit play and you can see we have 100 HP. And if I press A, we'll go down by 10. If I press D, we'll go up by 5. And you can see now this automatically just changes and it's this little code. And if I stop running and I start running, you can see it's back to 75 again. I can even for that sake make the player into a prefab pretty quickly. I can start, we can destroy him, load him in again. And as you can see, the numbers automatically update, which is just that easy. Now let's take it that one step further and let's also have the particle manager shoot some particles. Now this particle manager I just made very quickly. All it really holds is just references to two types of particles. And then it has a play damage particles and a play healing particles. Now the easiest way to do this is we're gonna be using the scriptable events. So I'm just gonna serialize public scriptable events. And I'm gonna serialize that as vector three because we want the position of where to play these particles. And this is on damage taken and on healing. We can call it that, that's completely fine. And all we just have to do is we just need to check if the change is less than zero, we want to take damage. And else if the change is greater than zero, that means we've healed, we've been healed. So that should be as easy as that. And now we raise these events. All you have to do is just call the scriptable event and dot raise and then feed it whatever you need to feed it just like when you invoke an event now going into the particle manager as well we also need a reference to these now so let me just copy them from this script put them in here and i of course need the reference to the obvious dot soap namespace and all we have to do now is in awake we just uh, subscribe to these events so let me do on damage taken dot on raised plus equals to play damage particles and we do the same thing with on healing tape and it should be as easy as that now let's go and make the events now going into the soap access folder we can also go to the creation menu create soap and i can go to scriptable events and make a vector 3 one and i can just call this on damage taken and we can also call the other one on healing taken like that and we just need to feed them to both so on damage taken in here on healing taken and same again goes in the particle manager like so and like so there we go let me save this and there you go and as you can see now when i heal it pops the healing particles that i made and when we take damage it pops the damaging particles and if i move the player around you can see that the position is now sent with two, so the particles will play in the correct position. So hopefully this will help your Unity developer workflow. I think it's super handy, especially with these binds as well, to easily be able to bind to them. Same thing with events, to be able to actually have events across. And one of the biggest features in my book, and one of the biggest use cases in my book, is the fact that you can have references across prefabs to scene objects. So as you can see, the player doesn't have to exist here, and they still have an event reference that's referenced in here, that's also referenced on the prefab. To me, this is a massive thing to have cross references between prefabs and scenes. This is one of the biggest use cases that I've seen in my professional work life. And yeah, 
subscribe. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.